All right, guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and today I want to talk about a couple of new astronomical discoveries and how they relate to a couple of space games out there, Elite Dangerous and Space Engine. Now, a little over 12 light years away from Earth, a set of new exoplanets have been discovered by the Institute of Space Studies of Catalonia. The star around which they orbit is called Teagarden Star, which itself was only discovered in 2003. Now, Teagarden is a fairly dim star. It also has a far lower mass and surface temperature than our own sun. In the footage here, we can see the Teagarden star system modelled in the Universe Sandbox 2. This particular system was downloaded from the Steam Workshop and was created by PUP314. Now, exoplanets, of course, are extrasolar worlds, that is, planets located outside our own solar system. For decades, centuries in fact, the existence of exoplanets was a subject of scientific theory rather than fact, but in 1995, the first ever exoplanet was discovered, 51 Pegasi b, located within the constellation of Pegasus. Whilst for a long while the majority of exoplanets discovered were large gas giants, more recently smaller, rocky and even potential Earth-like worlds have been discovered. The planets of TRAPPIST-1 are a great example. The Garden Star then is interesting because the two newly discovered worlds are very likely within the habitable zone of the star system. This means that the location is conducive to both water and life. Of course, even though the planets have been detected, there's no data to suggest their makeup, which means that we don't know if they have atmospheres or anything else or really any other details about them. What is known, however, is their orbital period. Teagarden B appears to have an orbital period of around 5 days, whilst Teagarden C has an orbital period of around 11 days. And again, to reiterate, it's also known that they likely exist within the star system's habitable zone. So, with this new information to hand, I thought it would be fun to jump into two of the most popular space simulators, namely Elite Dangerous and Space Engine, and see how Teagarden's star system is represented here. So both Elite and Space Engine rely on real-world star data for stars closest to Earth. This means that in terms of what is actually currently known, they should be accurate. Where there are gaps in the known data, the software of each game fills in the gaps with procedurally generated worlds and stars. Both softwares also have accurate astrophysics model, so they can often be surprisingly accurate when filling in such gaps. Firstly then, let's look at Elite Dangerous, which contains a full simulation of the Milky Way. This here is Teagarden Star, and on the system map we can see straight away that it has five planets in the system. Most of them are atmospheric lists. It's more than possible that the real world of Teagarden Star has more than two worlds, and that currently only two have been discovered. Looking at each of these planets in Elite, however, we can see that their orbital period is far slower than the real world data suggests. These are also shown as icy worlds here, most likely because the star is relatively cold and that these planets are a good distance away from the star. To gain any reasonable amount of heat, they would need to be much closer. So in the case of Elite then, whilst it does show planets, they appear to be in the incorrect position and have incorrect orbital periods. Planet 1 has an orbital period of 830 days, which is far beyond the real-world data of 5 days. Planet 2 has an orbital period of 1,311 days, compared to the real-world data of just 11 days. All of the planets in the Elite Dangerous version of Teagarden are well outside of the habitable zone. Space Engine, like Elite, also models the entire Milky Way galaxy, which we are travelling through right here. What's more, Space Engine also models an entire universe containing over a hundred billion different galaxies, some of them known such as Andromeda, and many procedurally created. All of them can be fully visited and explored. In Space Engine, the Teagarden star system instantly has a very different take to Elite. Here, most of the worlds contain an atmosphere, and some even contain seas of various liquid types. Looking at the planets in more detail, we can see that Space Engine also shows the system as having five planets. More specifically, however, planets 2 and 3 appear to have a very accurate orbital periods. A planet 2 has an orbit period of 6 days, compared to the real-world data that suggests 5 days, and planet 3 has an orbital period of 11 days, which perfectly matches real-world data. Looking at these planets' distances from their star, in the Space Engine it shows that planet 2 is at 0.035 astronomical units, whilst planet 3 is 0.049 astronomical units. 
The optimistic habitable zone of Tea Garden star system is between 0.02 astronomical units and 0.048. This means that Planet 2 is well within that range, whilst Planet 3 is only one thousandth of an astronomical unit outside of it. Planet 1 is also worth taking a look at here in Space Engine. Now, this is closer than the other two worlds and has an orbital period of just 2.7 days and has a distance of 0.19 astronomical units. And keep in mind that, uh, as I said, whilst we've uh, discovered two exoplanets in the Tea Garden star system, there may well be more. Overall then, Space Engine appears to paint a far more accurate picture of Tea Garden star than Elite Dangerous. It's got the orbital period correct, and the planetary distances are within the habitable zone, uh, with one being just one thousandth of an astronomical unit outside. All in all then, it's an amazing show of the astronomical modelling going on here. It's also worth pointing out that both Elite Dangerous and Space Engine have placed five planetary bodies in this system. And whilst Elite misses the ball a little in this case, it's worth mentioning that it did a very accurate job when it came to predicting the layout of TRAPPIST-1. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.